Let me share with you an interesting question from the test. This is an exclusion test, so you need to know the answer exactly. Which expression does not belong to the group? And you have four different choices for possible expressions. Expression A, 9 multiplied by 2. Expression B, 13 plus 5. Expression C, 40 minus 22. And expression D, 32 divided by 8. So which one does not belong to the group? Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, three choices out of four lead to the same answer. 9 multiplied by 2 is 18. 13 plus 5 is 18. 40 minus 22 is 18. And 32 divided by 8 is not 18. It's 4. So the correct answer here is choice D, 32 divided by 8. Hopefully you've answered this question correctly. Here's the tricky question from the real test, but somehow I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer on your own. Which statement does not have any similarity with the others in the group in your four different choices? February 2nd, 2020. Choice B, day five. Choice C, was it a rat I saw? Question mark. And choice D, race cars. So which statement does not have any similarity with the others in the group? Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video for 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's see if we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. As you might be well aware, in English language, there are some sentences, sequences, phrases, or words that can have the same meaning even if spelled backwards. Three of the items here fall into this category. For example, choice A. February 2, 2020 can have the same meaning even if it's spelled backward. 2, 2, 2020. The word day 5 will have the same meaning even if spelled backwards. Was it the rat I saw will have the same meaning even if it's spelled backwards. The only exception here is the word race cars. And what I'd like to point out, even this word will fall into this category if you use it as a single, not as a plural. Race car. So the correct answer here is choice D race car. Hopefully you've nailed it and now know what to look for on the test in these types of questions. Some of you might find this question tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve it or not on your own, you will be excited to learn the solution to this real-life assessment test question. Here's the question. Determine the missing part. And you're presented with the 3 by 3 square, which has arrows pointing in different directions. In the middle of the square, you have the X sign, and one of the squares is missing the arrow, and you have four different choices. Choice A, arrow pointing in the bottom left corner. Choice B, arrow pointing in the bottom right corner. Choice C, arrow pointing left. And choice D, arrow pointing in the upper right corner. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. So did you determine the missing part? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, to determine the next item in the sequence, we have to look for the patterns. And as you can see, both rows and columns have a sequence. So if you look at the bottom row, you see that the arrow points in the bottom right corner, then in the upper right corner, then in the upper left corner. So that is the sequence. It rotates counterclockwise. You see that the arrow go from pointing to the upper left corner, then to the upper right corner, and then to the bottom right corner. You see that the arrow pointing rotates clockwise. And the missing piece in the middle is designed to confuse you. This is the missing piece. It would help you if there would be an actual arrow, but it does not exist. So what you see here is that this middle piece was put in place to confuse you and to show that there is no sequence in the middle row. So the sequence for the missing part would have to be re-established from the right column. So we have arrow in the upper right box pointing to the upper left corner. The next one would be pointing to the bottom left corner. And then the following one would be pointing to the bottom right corner. You see that this particular arrow in its sequence moves counterclockwise as well. Let's recap. Notice that all arrows follow the sequence. 
Both rows and columns have sequences, something to look for, and each arrow points to the corners and is rotating either counterclockwise or clockwise. So the missing part involves finding the arrow that matches the pattern. The correct choice here is choice A, arrow pointing in the bottom left corner. Hopefully you've nailed this question, and now know how to answer these types of questions in the test. Here's the question from the real test you can try to solve on your own. Baker received 90 orders of the cakes, and it took 30 minutes to bake and decorate one-fifth of the orders. How many cakes can be done in two hours? In your four different choices, choice A, 36 cakes, choice B, 54 cakes, choice C, 72 cakes, and choice D, 90 cakes. Feel free to pause this video and try to do this challenge now. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comments and I'll give you my feedback. Thanks for participating. This question is quite tricky, but I would like to show you the solution so we can solve this interesting and tricky question together. Which shape does not belong to the group? And you have four choices of shapes. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue and see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. In this case, shapes can be grouped by number of sides in the shape. For example, you see that all the shapes in the left have six sides. If you count the sides, for example, in this shape, you will see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six. Same with the hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six. And same with the arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the correct answer here is choice A for the pentagon, which only has five sides, one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully you've nailed this question and answered it correctly and now know how to answer similar questions and problems on the test. Some of you might find this question tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve it on your own or not, you will be excited to learn the solution to this real live assessment test question. Find the missing number by imagining how the clock's handle rotates. The start of the sequence will be at nine o'clock and it ends in the middle. You have four different choices. Choice A, 28, choice B, 42, choice C, 14, and choice D, 44. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Before we jump to the solution, I want to pinpoint the sequence. The start of the sequence is at 9 o'clock with the number 9. The next number would be 16, next would be 23, 30, 37, then missing number, and then 51. Now let's jump to the solution. As I already mentioned, we are presented with the clockwise sequence. Following this sequence, we can calculate the difference between the next number and the previous number. For example, in case of 9 and 16, the difference would be 16 minus 9, 7. To calculate the next number, we can also do the difference by subtracting 16 from 23. This is also 7. This makes us think that the sequence might be incrementing next number by 7. If we follow the sequence, we can confirm that that's exactly the case. 23 plus 7 is 30, 30 plus 7 is 37, so the next number that we will calculate would be 37 plus 7, which would be equal 44, which is one of the choices. Let's reaffirm that our calculation is correct by adding 7 to 44. 44 plus 7 is 51, so that's the next number in the center. So the correct answer here is choice D, 44. Hopefully you answered this question correctly, but in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. Here is the real interesting question from the test that you can try to solve on your own. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Which expression does not belong to the group? And you have four different expressions. 6 plus 6 equals 12. Choice B, 5 plus 9 equals 14. Choice C, 5 plus 6 equals 11. And then choice D, 3 plus 7 equals 10. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time for you to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. If you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comments and I'll give you my feedback. 
I will also post a detailed answer in my future videos, so make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic. Thanks for participating. Let me share with you an interesting question from the test. I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. The following expressions are similar except for one. Select one item that does not belong to the group, and you have four items shown on the screen. 200 divided by 40, 2 multiplied by 20, 0 0.2, and 20 out of 100. You need to select one item that does not belong to the group. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Interesting question, isn't it? All of the expressions have similarity, as they all equal 20%. Let's take a look at all of them one by one. Choice A, 40 is a 20% of 200. Choice C, 0 0.2 is already 20%. And choice D, 20 out of 100, is 20% too. Except for one, choice B, 2 multiplied by 20, is 40. So it has nothing to do with 20%, especially for the answer. In choice B, 2 multiplied by 40, the answer equals 40, which is different for the 20% answer as we identified it for items A, C, and D. So the correct answer is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the interesting question from the real test. Which of the following shapes does not belong to the group? And you have four different choices and four different shapes, choices A, B, C, and D. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge together. As usual, you need to look for similarities. And in this case, similarity is being symmetrical. A shape can be considered symmetrical if it has a central line dividing both sides to show the same appearance. And shape B in this case is not symmetrical. So the correct choice here is choice B. This shape is not symmetrical. Hopefully you've nailed this question, but in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Let me share with you an interesting question similar to the ones you see on the test. I have confidence that you'll be able to figure out the answer. Here's the question. Baker received 40 cake orders and it took 45 minutes to bake and decorate one quarter of the orders. How many cakes can be done in one hour and 30 minutes? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 10 cakes. Choice B, 20 cakes. Choice C, 30 cakes. And choice D, 40 cakes. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue and see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. To solve this challenge, we first need to calculate what is one quarter of the cakes. We do it by dividing 40 by 4. So 10 is one quarter of 40. If 10 cakes can be done in 45 minutes, we need to calculate how many cakes can be done in 1 hour and 30 minutes. Because 1 hour and 30 minutes is 90 minutes, which is the double of 45 minutes, then it means in 90 minutes, two batches of the cakes can be done. And if we can do 10 cakes in 45 minutes, then we can do 20 cakes in 90 minutes. So the correct answer is choice B, 20 cakes. Hopefully you've nailed this question, but if you need more questions or practice problems like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Very frequently, we get a question if usage of the calculator is allowed on the test. The best way is to ask the provider. Some providers allow for use of the calculator, and some of them are not. Make sure, when you use the calculator, that you learn how to use it in advance. Practice sample questions on the calculator and see if it actually helps you. And make sure that the calculator has fresh batteries, if it uses batteries. Or bring charger and connect it right before the test. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your visualization skills. 
Once you merge two objects below, what type of figure can you visualize? And you are presented with two 5x5 five five squares. Each square has white boxes as well as shaded boxes. And you are supposed to merge them and decide which shape can you visualize out of four different choices. Choice A, chart. Choice B, shape. Choice C, graph. And choice D, animal. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue and see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, what you do as part of visualization exercise, you need to merge all the shaded dots, like in this particular case. For example, the dot here is missing, and if you add the dot here, you will come up with the picture. When you add the dot here, the picture will start to emerge. You will also add another dot here and then another missing dot here. And you would need to do it in your memory because most of the time you wouldn't have any tools to do it on paper. So upon combining and merging all the items, you see that the diamond was formed. And this is the final picture of how the final shape looks like. And I already gave out the answer. The correct answer is the shape because diamond is the shape and the figure that combined from the shaded dots is a diamond. So hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Let me share with you an interesting question which tests your reasoning skills. Determine which two numbers come next in the sequence. And you have a sequence of numbers 3, 9, 27. And then four different choices for subsequent numbers. Choice A. 81 and 243. Choice B, 64 and 126. Choice C, 72 and 265. And choice D, 55 and 729. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. To solve any sequence type questions, you need to determine the pattern. And in this particular sequence, next number is calculated as previous number multiplied by 3. So you have the 9 calculated as 3 by 3. 9 by 3 is 27. So the next number after 27 will be calculated as 27 multiplied by 3, which would be 81. And then 81 multiplied by 3 would be 243. So the correct answer here is choice A, 81 and 243. Hopefully you've answered this question correctly. But in case you need more solutions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Here is the question from the real test you can try to solve on your own. What English word can you form using all the letters in the box? And you're presented with the 3 by 3 box, which has letters ETA, E-C-R-L-E-B. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can solve this challenge. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in comments and I'll give you my feedback. I will also post a detailed answer in my future videos, so make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to find the answer. Thanks for participating. Let's review the question, which tests your verbal reasoning skills. Choose the missing letters from below to form a word using all letters presented. And you have a 3x3 three three box, which has three letters missing. What you need to do, you need to try to form a word, and to form it, populate these three missing letters from four choices presented. Choice A, A-R-N. Choice B, R-D-N. Choice C, I-A-M and choice D, H-O-W. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. So what we know, based on the instruction in the question, is that the word has nine letters. Typically, letters in the sequence flow to form a word in these types of questions. So in this particular question, you need to start in the upper left corner and then flow from left to right, then from top to bottom, from right to left, 
and again into the middle row. And once you do that, you will see that the word president can be formed. So the missing letters are R, D, N. And the correct choice here is choice B, R, D, N. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your analytical skills. How many triangles do you see in the picture? And you have triangle presented with smaller triangles inside. And you have a picture presented on the left, as well as four possible choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 13. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 15. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you come up with the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Let me walk you through the process of counting triangles. First, we include the largest outside triangle. Second, we include smaller triangles. Because large triangle was divided into four, we include smaller triangles, which are displayed here as two and then three. Then we include each one of the very small triangles, four, five, six, seven, then eight, nine, 10, and 11. And as a last step, we include remaining smaller triangles that have not been counted in the first place, 12 and then 13. So the correct answer is one plus four plus two by four, which is equal 13. So the correct choice here is choice B, 13. And the key to answer this question is to make sure you did not miss any of the triangles shown in the picture. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions on the test. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have a community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.